hello and welcome. Welcome, Stefan. Now, we are, we are now in Hi. peace. Um, and I'm going to pause here. Uh, can you? Uh, well, welcome, mm -hmm. Stefan, and welcome, everyone. Thank We're you. now in Brazil. It's going to take a few minutes for people to come into class because I um, I kept them in the other class, Stefan, for longer than I should have. <laughs> I apologize. Okay, that's um, all right. A little bit about uh, Stefan. Stefan is in uh, Brazil, but he's originally from, uh, is it Dominican Republic? Am I right? Or did I make a mistake? No, Trinidad. Trinidad, sorry. sorry. Trinidad and Tobago. Oh, that's right. Trinidad. Exactly. Sorry about yeah. that. Um, and no <laughs> and um, he's been in Brazil for a while, so I, I presume that you speak uh, a few languages, which is really great. Um, yeah, yeah. And um, the presentation is about blogging, of course, and from the perspective of the speaker. So I'll let you start, okay. um, and then uh, people will be coming in. I hope you don't mind that. So. Oh, that's Thank all right. You. All right, no problem. I like to, I, I cater for the late comers as well. That's all right. If you can, uh, so sorry, see people coming in. Yeah, yeah. If if you can uh, put the uh, the uh, area where it's on your mouth a little bit farther away, if you can, just make the yeah a little even more. Yeah, it doesn't have to be that close. Thank you. All right, I'll mute my mic and let you continue. Volume is all right. Yeah, great. So yes, welcome everybody. People are coming in. Um, I'd like to say hi to everybody and thank you very much, Navi, for the introduction. Um, as she said, I'm in and Tobago, but I've been here in uh, living in, in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, for uh, about 18 years now. So my Portuguese, which is the language they speak here, okay, is extremely it's perfect, but yeah, yeah, it's mm. native. All right. So um, really, I like I like the language. I also speak. Spanish All right. How was that? Um, see, Tom is <laughs> How is that now? Is everybody okay? Is it okay? Volume is all right. So, yeah, um, yeah, great. So yes, welcome everybody. People are coming in. Um, I'd like to say hi to everybody and thank you very much, Nelly, for the introduction. Um, as she said, I'm Trinidad and Tobago, but I've been here in uh, living in, in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil for uh, about 18 years now. So my, my Portuguese, which is a the language they speak here, right, is extremely, uh, I, I wouldn't say it's perfect, but yeah, yeah, it's near native. So um, I, I really, I like, I like the language. I also speak Spanish and French. Um, I see Tom is based in, in Venezuela, I see people coming in from Romania, from Hungary, other countries. So yeah, um, uh, languages has been or have been part of my life, I would say. I love learning languages, I love everything that deals with language. And um, the blog, I'm here to talk about blogging as well, right? And, and what I want to do is talk a bit about my experiences in the classroom right um about blogging and how i've been able to use blogs with my groups um yeah great people are coming in marianne uh, mariella okay great so as people come in ellie's doing a good job of welcoming everybody but i would love to say hello anyway right and um basically if you might be curious to wonder why, why i actually uh, decided to live here in brazil and um it was uh, to make a long short story let's say short i basically um decided to i came here to learn portuguese first and foremost and then um you know one thing led to the other and um i really did, let's say identified with the, the brazilian culture right yeah the hospitality as nelly is saying here but i developed i identified with the culture because we have a lot of things in common in Trinidad, we have the carnival. So, this this kind of it, it, it kind of typed in, and and let's say blended with what I'm I've been you know I'm used to. But anyway, um, basically I, I came here to work as well, 
and one of the options that most uh, let's say native speakers of english when they come to these countries is you know teaching so this naturally happened and um, i worked and i currently work at a, a language school one of the top language schools here in in brazil based in rio but we have um, schools or let's say branches in other other cities around the country and um, the experiences i'm going to be talking about here in blogging right has to do with um, some of these groups that i have been uh, using or been teaching um, so the presentation aims at showcasing these experiences right with both adult and uh, teen learners in the so all the references i made here are students brazilian students right their native language being portuguese and um, i said aging from teen young very maybe early teen older let's say senior high teens to adult learners right so that the experience has been very very profitable and what happens now is that now i'm, I'm working directly with the training so my blogging experience has diminished somewhat because i'm not really in the classroom as much as i would like to but um, let's see what what can come from there right so um i myself come quite comfortable with blogs as a digital medium so this drive i i had to use them with students came naturally to me and um i managed over about 10 blogs on blogger just on blogger um not regularly but I, I keep them there you know ranging from as we said language learning to translation to my personal blog and so on and um i also have some blogs on wordpress that i want for example i use for toffel helping students prepare for the toffel test and then i use one with um, some high school students learning english and um, i also had a very nice run with some kid blog uh, kid, the kid blog tool. I don't know if you're familiar with it. And um, yeah, 10 blogs at the same time, Marianne. And um, kid blog was quite useful because it allowed uh, students to upload their material, allowed students to, to author, and um, it was quite safe. It's a place where they could, you know, come in and um, uh, post uh, their own material, share with their students, and uh, we connected with people from you know other other parts of the world. All right, so that was a wonderful experience as well. But um, I think what was important with, with this is that they gain more than just language competence. I think uh, I would like to start by stressing that that uh, blogging with the classroom thing, with the classroom uh, as part of the classroom experience, was was very very useful for for me as a teacher and for them, because it it involved you know a more task based kind of of learning, it involved constructivist theories which, you know, based on the idea of students interacting with the environment, interacting with others, um, so there was interaction in creating, interaction with. Um, you know, deciding on what to write, how to write, and expression of, re of, of, let's say, doing research, right? So there were several moments where students had to interact with language itself, right? With language, uh, in this case, uh, as, a, as, a, as a real medium for communication, and then with their, with their peers, right? Oh, great, Nelly, thank you very much for the information there about uh, Kid Blog. Right, it is basically wonderful because each student can have their own blog, right? So they really have this thing about showing off their, their let's say, their, what they were able to produce, and it 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 does lead to the idea of, or, or let's say, consolidates the idea of constructionism, uh, of getting students to create, and learning comes takes place through the creation of 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 a, a learning object, of product, and then sharing this with others. Right. This is what we do basically. If you think of social media, right? Uh, when we share put a, a picture, a selfie, when we post something online on Facebook or Twitter, wherever, um, we want somebody to either like it, somebody to post it, somebody to um, you know share it, or let's say they agree. So um, constructionism in learning is basically about that, right? It's about giving students the opportunity to. Um, share what they have learned with others and um, this this sharing process also enhances their learning right so let's take a look at the second uh, slide we take a look at the second slide and I would ask Nelly to move to the second slide is that okay 
right great so the layout as I put there I plan to go over these points in this in, in this, this this discussion right first I'll take a general look at the concept of blogging right but particularly in terms of blogging in language teaching and language learning right because blogging of course as we have seen in these three days of wonderful presentations it has spawned several possibilities in language teaching and language learning right and what i want to focus on of course talking about my experience it's kind of like a case study here right where um the last three points i put on this slide it talks about it shows just a drop in the immense ocean of ideas that we have seen over the, 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 the three days, right? In terms of projects, in terms of uh, purpose. And my experimenting with blogs in the classroom uh, taught me lessons. And the first one I, I realized when I, let's say, decided to use blogs with, 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 with students was the first lesson I learned from this was that blog participation is not necessarily restricted to students posting comments to what you have written. And I was very, very, um, I was limiting myself to this. We're thinking about, okay, students have to comment. You just have to, you know, click on comment and say something. And um, this, I realized, was not the only way um, that students are actually participating. Right? If you think of the fact that they actually visualize your, your content, they read it, student viewing is also um, of certain, certain extent passive participation. Right. So this is something I learned over the years using uh, blogging as a tool. So let's go to the third. Oh yeah, we can. Before I go to the slide, you see people are saying, "Yeah, good. Yeah, third slide. Thank you." Right. People, students are reluctant to writing. So I just pick up on what um, Mariella said here. Right. It, they are reluctant sometimes. Uh, that think that's why some even some colleagues of mine, teachers, have said to me that blogging is, I mean, dead. Nobody blogs anymore. Um, but quite the contrary. What we've seen is that blogging is still very, very alive, and as it can, you have to have a reason for using it. It is a medium, like anything else. Um, you could. In terms of, you could think of other platforms that function as a blog. You could think of Twitter, you think of Facebook, uh, you know, Facebook groups uh, where you could use them as a, as a platform for learning. But anyway, I think what we're talking about here, uh, and I put in this third slide the, the definition of the blog, right? And it, that's this is basically the original idea of what a blog was all about, where you express your opinion, but um it goes more beyond that right over the course of the festival we see that blogs are first and foremost opinion platform but in elt they go beyond just somebody stating an opinion it could be a bulletin board right for the students it could be a learning platform or what we call a, a virtual learning environment right a vle it could become a learning object where students create their own uh, evidence of what they have learned right or a portfolio it could be a PLN where students um, keep track of uh, their professional, uh, personal, sorry, development, and teachers as well could keep track of their professional development, their learning development, right, a learning network per se. Um, and one of the ways that I discovered I ended up using blogs was, and outlined here in my experiences, was as a class register of language that has emerged during the classroom. So, you know, language that uh, came up in the course of our my teaching and that students were able to use. And this became something that I, I wanted, I thought it would be interesting for us to register that. You know, it's, um, it's like a notebook, a page where I think, okay, well, um, students use such wonderful language. Why not keep it somewhere where they could go back to it, where it could be recorded? And what better place than on, on the net, right, on the web? So the blog was um, my natural choice. Okay, um, let's see, move on to slide four, right? Let's go to slide four, uh, Nelly. Great. So you look at slide four and um, answering this basic question here, this perennial question. Um, I mean, if you ask students, oh, why learn a language? Um, and nowadays you think of why learn English? And the, the answers always come up as well. Okay, English is the language of spoken, international language, a lingua franca. So you need to uh, uh, learn English, right? Um, it, it's important for you to, to get ahead professionally, personally, and so on. So. The answers that I already put here on this, um, let's say, 
uh, a wood cloud, right? Uh, blogs are in, uh, can be an enhancement tool where they enhance this or they show the importance of learning a language to students, right? Because it can bring, it can be a pleasurable experience for them. It can empower them where they are able to uh, take control of their own knowledge or their own learning, um, be selective in terms of where they find uh, content, and they have to be critical of what they read, um, what they re uh, where they get their sources, and so on. It uh, provides them with opportunities for perspective, for, for reflection. Uh, it boosts, builds their confidence because uh, for example, you know, students show the fact that, well, wow, I've been able to uh, um, actually write something in English, right? And uh, I see we have somebody saying, we, we need to learn language to contact with, with, uh, with each other. Yes, it's, it's a form of making contact with people. And one of the things, especially my teen students, um, they felt that they were able to actually share their opinions and they had, uh, people had, you know, they had something to say and people were actually willing to read. For example, when I use kid blogs, the kid blog tool and, and students were able to get feedback from you know um, fellow students or let's say students of their same age in other countries they felt wow uh, somebody is actually reading my stuff right and um, again this learning took place so it brought that sense of achievement that would not be, probably not come from just just using a book right or from them just practicing in the classroom among themselves or just with the teacher so it gave them that insight that yeah it is possible for them to actually learn right and engage them those course these 21st century skills that we talk so much about about digital literacy about transmedia navigation about uh, you know a uh, uh, selective uh, um, literacy and cr critical literacy and so on right so uh, it answers these basic questions Right. And I think that um, good blogs, uh, it can be very valuable for them and for us because it gives us a chance to ref uh, uh, also take a look at what we are doing with them in the classroom and um, make sure that they have a chance to express themselves, not just we impose our views on them, right? So that's it. I think the idea of why learn a language and why blog, I think, um, and we, we could see, we could come up with several answers. Um, I mean, uh, after all of these wonderful presentations we've seen so far, why blog? Why still blog in the classroom? Okay. So, looks cool. Thank you very much, Salim. <laughs> so, let's look at uh, the next slide, okay, uh, Nelly? Great. So, still on the idea of why blog then, if you ask of why blog? I think you have some answers there that I try to, to, to explore, right? And to talk more in depth about my experiences with blogs, I believe that some of the benefits of, of uh, blogs that have uh, that have brought blogs have brought my students, I, I try to list them here, right? In several concepts that we talk a lot about in ELT nowadays. Right? One of the driving forces for my assistance with blogs in the classroom was that it helped me organize all uh, the wonderful language the students were able to spontaneously produce during the classes, and this wonderful. Language which I'm talking about. Uh, I mean, wonderful because I think it's it is it, it is really a, um, a really really interesting or um, one of the most um, wonderful experiences for us as teachers to see students using language without us having to teach them per se, right? Or that uh, we we see that they have you know acquired this language either you know, their personal experiences out of the classroom or through reading as well, right? And they, um, we ask them to do an activity and they just produce this language on their own accord, right? So this is what emergent language is. And um, recording emergent language, this concept of emergent language, right? I hope everybody understands what that is, right? Emergent language. Um, it's basically what students produce in the course of an activity in the classroom and uh, something that you didn't teach them. Um, but it is relevant to the task, right? It is important to the task. It um, it is more than it, it accurate. It is um, it's extremely, and it is what would necessarily meet their needs to communicate in that particular activity. So recording this language, right, is emergent language. 
as opposed to let's say incidental language which is the kind of language that students say well how do you say this for example uh, in the course in the, in the course of an activity they might remember something or a particular task might bring them remember something they had seen or they had they wanted to always ask a teacher and they ask oh how do i say this it's not necessarily related to the task related to the target lesson right so this is incidental and then of course you have the target language is what which is the material that was designed in uh, the course book right so recording this immersion language was something that became kind of an obsession, but it was something that was also stressed in um, in, in the, the language school where I work, right? And I plan my classes to foster as much as possible this these opportunities for students to actually, um, let's say, use language personally and naturally, thus giving rise to immersion language, right? And this obviously led to uh, effective, as I put here on the slide, learner training because you, students understand that, of course, they, they're learning in the classroom, but um, they also have uh, a lot to share, right? They're not the famous empty slates or the tabula rasa. So their own experiences as people uh, can contribute to the learning experience. It boosts the learner autonomy, right? Uh, it meets their learner needs. Uh, because it's not just sometimes the book might not be able to cover all their needs, uh, their, their, let's say, communicative needs out of the classroom, and it meets the expectations, what they hope to achieve as a learner. Uh, and uh, the expectations as far as acquiring and mastering of the language goes. And consequently, it covers the, the, course, the course content, right? Because it, is in, it becomes embedded or inter intertwined with what was uh, originally designed in the course. Right, so the learning becomes to a certain extent blended because using the blogs, then they can uh, students. What most of my students did was they ended up subscribing to the blog, so that um, they would every time there was a new post, they would easily um, access it through their emails. They could go back, read it, and check it. They could study the topics further. They could revise for their tests, um, and then of course learn um, even more out of the classroom. So uh, what I'm seeing here, or what I'm going to show you in slides 6 through 10, right, would be experiences I've had or I posted a sample post from each of the blogs, or not each of them, but at least five blogs that I've been using with different groups. And I also included the link to the blog. So if you wish to explore, you want to take a look at what, what we were able to produce in those, of, of those blogs, please. I would be really, really, I really appreciate it. And if you want to comment as well on the blog or the posts that are in the blogs, I would also appreciate it. Um, as I said earlier, um, we are involved right now with teacher training. So um, that has kind of reduced my, my time in the classroom and the use of the blogs. But hopefully I will be able to use them, but in a different, let's say, from a different perspective. Um, so far, uh, everybody's all right in terms of content. Um, I'd like maybe to see if you have any questions so far. Uh, okay, Maria is there. All right, Tom, thank you. And great. And I take it most of you guys do also use blogs, right? Uh, those of you who are participating here. And um, I'll probably at the end of the session, I'd like to see what you or hear from you guys in terms of what your experiences have been with blogs. And um, if you've had the same kind of experience I've had where I wanted to get students to post or to comment, and I kept thinking that if they were not commenting, then the blog was not, let's say, useful for them, right? Or it wasn't, uh, it was a waste of time, waste of my time, and, and um, you know, it wouldn't be uh, beneficial to anybody. But um, my, my, of course, my perspective of that has changed. <laughs> no way, as the Doina said, Doina Andre. Yeah, no way. <laughs> so let's go to the next slide then, uh, Nelly. Take a look. Let's go to slide six. Great. So on slide six, I'm going to briefly discuss each slide, right, from here on in, in terms of the experience, right. So this was kept with uh, 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 an advanced group. Uh, level C1, if you think of the Common European Framework reference, and it what 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 happened here was it was um, served as a kind of a class notebook, because um, at the end of each class, uh, together with my students, 
Um, this is something we normally do in the class anyway, right? Because we use the interactive whiteboards. But what I decided to do was rather than just going over the topics we discussed in the class or checking what we learned in on the interactive whiteboard, I decided to transfer this um, the language or the target language we had covered to a blog. Right, so at the end of the class, students, uh, together with my students, right, we decided on okay, what we wanted to be to be put on the blog. We said, okay, what what do you want to revise here? What do you think was the most important um, topics or language we we saw? Um, language you would want to you would want to learn at a later date or review at a later date. So this was brainstormed in terms of language, uh, either grammar or vocabulary or press, uh, pronunciation sometimes. And then um, I was uh, of course given the task of putting it up on this blog, right? So this first one was quite useful. Uh, students would go in and then um, on, on, on the, the next day either comment, well, oh, I don't remember that particular word, or um, I have no idea that we saw so much in the class. Right? And it was good because uh, for students who missed the class, um, since they had subscribed to it, right, they would sometimes come back and um, either ask questions, ask for further clarification on, on, on the topics, right? So this was the first one, right? Uh, it was called Masterful, right? Because they were at this level advanced students. Yeah, and crime is an interesting topic, right? And this one, as you see, talks about cybercrime. So we related to security-related issues. Um, it was right around the time, actually, when um, there was a, a lot of discussion about um, uh, Edward Snowden and whistleblowing and the invasion of privacy uh, of, of our personal accounts and so on and what was going on in the states in terms of uh, uh, the, the, the access government has to our personal accounts and so on. So there were a lot of, it was, it was very, 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 it was really, really, um, let's say, a current topic that was extremely relevant for their own lives. Um, so it, it, it really got a lot of comments from them in the classroom. Let's look at the next slide, number seven. Okay, Nelly. So slide number seven, this was with a upper intermediate group. So it would be roughly B2, right, in, in the CEF, CEFR. And um, what happened with this group was sometimes it was actually used as a lead-in. So um, they would sometimes get, I would sometimes prepare something, an activity or a post, and then send that, uh, since they subscribed, they would get it by email before the class. So they had to take a look at it beforehand. But it was more instigative. So I was trying to instigate that. I didn't actually uh, oblige them to, to read, but it provoked a bit of discussion. So when they actually came into the classroom, they were already uh, aware of what we were going to talk about and they were eager to share their views, right? So it, brought, it made the class a bit flipped, all right? Sometimes it was a, a kind of a homework assignment um, uh, platform. So uh, the homework was actually posted there for them. Uh, so it's actually included a link where they had to um, use Padlet, they had to uh, write, they had to maybe use a Google Doc, edit a Google Doc, right? But the link was provided on the blog. So it became a blended platform and also class register of the language we had seen in class as well. So it was quite useful for most of them, right? Um, and I think it was really, really uh, helpful. Uh, it brought up a lot of, of discussion too. Uh, and they were really into it. They, they, they enjoyed using this a lot, right? Then let's take a look at slide number eight. So if you go to slide eight, if I'm going too fast, but I can slow down a bit if you, if you think I'm going too fast for you guys here, right? Just let me know. Um, this one was a slide, uh, sorry, was a blog I used with a group of teens, right? It was an advanced teen group. So they were ages 17 to 19. Uh, I was peculiar about this group and um, I really, going, looking back at these slides, of course, is a bit nostalgic because um, uh, it brings back memories of, of, of what, what we discussed and how the students took to it, right? Oh, yeah, there's a discussion going on about crime on the internet and so on. Yeah, this is, is it's always a, 
it is a, a hot topic. It would be, let's say, a buzz topic now, right? All right. But um, just going back to this slide here on slide eight, right? As I said, it was a group of 17 to 19 year olds. Uh, they were actually the four, a very small group. And um, they were, what was what was interesting about this group that they they although you know they, they had very strong opinions about things. They were very critical. Um, they loved expressing themselves, right? And um, this the blog became a medium for them to express themselves creatively as well, right? So that I gave them time to kind of come in and uh, we would choose the topics they wanted to write about, right? So they would come in here, um, post, uh, I would help them, I would sometimes help with editing content, uh, revising topics with them, right? So it was more an authoring tool. This blog was more of authoring, uh, either co-authoring or individual authoring, right? And they uploaded the videos because, um, you know, they were quite really um, into um, te technology and internet. So uh, I didn't really have much to do in terms of helping them with the technological aspects of things, right? Um, so it, was, uh, it was more of a task-based learning uh, project. It was constructivist, highly constructivist, because they loved sharing and, and getting views from other people. Um, we had, I had, you know, teachers come in and, and talk to them and, or even read their blogs and then share with others. And um, there were other groups, let's say, at the, at the same level, advanced groups, right? And they would, um, these teachers, although they were a bit reluctant to use blogs with their groups, um, they asked me to share the, the blog posts with or uh, use these blog posts with their groups as well. So that students, we had, let's say, advanced groups, uh, now other groups at the same level, and um, this became, a, a, let's say, an extra reading task for the other students who were not much into blogging. Right? So it was, it was really uh, a fantastic experience um, for me and for them. I think they, they really had a good time. Right, um, I noticed, of course, they, they were very much into hip hop. That's why the name Oxford Gangsters and stuff. Um, so that they were, they loved um, anything that had to do with hip hop. So, um, <coughs> excuse me, um, excuse me, there. So videos, uh, music, uh, the lives of, of of you know most of these artists and stuff. They really were in, into that kind of thing. So this was something I, I gave them this opportunity to explore their their interests a little bit more, right? Um, moving on to slide nine, then, All right? Thank you very much, Mariella. Uh, Nelly, let's look at slide nine, and uh, let's see what we I talk about on slide nine. Great, slide nine, right? It's um, another quite encouraging tool here because notice it's the topic or the 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 the, the blink says pre-conversation so it was used with a pre-intermediate group but for conversation right so this was a group that if you think of it uh, a2 nearing between a2 b1 and you might think well there's not much in terms of conversation for this kind of level right or how would they be able to actually um, uh, develop or have uh, um, effective conversations with each other. Um, but quite the contrary, this was um, uh, a very revealing um, experience as well because they were able to produce not just based on the content I provided for them, but spontaneously come up with ideas, spontaneously. Um, you know, although they were uh, pre continuing they had a lot to say. Of course, students always have a lot to say. This is something, a lesson that we, we kind of ignore that students do have a lot to share, even at, at lower levels, right? So this blog was a kind of example of that, that yes, students, even at, at, at say, uh, lower levels, there is, there is a possibility of exploring conversation with these levels, right? So um, what I did with them, it became a kind of, a, 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 of course, it was a registering language. It was produced uh, to a part where we talked about emergent language as well. Um, the topics, um, what they what they saw, what they were able to, to come up with ideas they wanted to talk about. So um, they would suggest 
topics as well. Although I already had come with uh, ideas, I, I had planned my class. Um, the content was basically, I wouldn't say it was a free style kind of course, but um, I could it choose any topic I wanted to use for them, right? But um, it allowed me to adapt my original ideas to what they had wanted to talk about, right? So in this one, it was quite interesting too. I would say, you see that um, I recorded what they came up with, I, I presented the, the ideas and kind of organized it into, uh, 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 let's say, uh, a record or a document and it became again a learning object for them. All right, this is the key thing. So that with these groups, particularly uh, these last two, right, I'm going to show you this one and the, the other group that I have, a conversation group, um, it was it was a, a way of showing that, okay, uh, they can keep track of, of language and um, most of the times these students would come and go on a regular basis. Right? They didn't attend classes every day or, or every week, right? In this case, sorry, this was a, a, a once a week group session and um, they would sometimes miss classes. So the blog helped them to, you know, keep track of what, um, what, what we had discussed. Uh, and it, it raised awareness as well, right? Because lots of times I would insert uh, links, I would insert maybe extra material for them, extra videos that we hadn't seen in class. I would recommend, or students would even recommend uh, extra material that we could insert there, um, or that could be, at, let's say, expanding the topics we had seen in the classroom, all right? So again, uh, the, the idea of the, the blended learning, the idea of the flipped classroom, all of this was there constantly in the class, right? So um, I mean, I'm really, really proud to see what they were able to reduce, right? Um, proud to see that they were able to, um, get, let's say, take stock of their own learning, and um, they really appreciated that. So I remember even when um, I had to, as I said, I, I'm not teaching these groups anymore. So when um, I told them that I was not going to be teaching anymore, they were the first thing they thought of. Oh, what about the blog? Are you gonna? How are we gonna keep the blog? And is the other teacher gonna keep the blog? Um, because the blog was so important to us, right? So it showed the importance of having a blog in the classroom, right? Uh, and again, my uh, my thing about the blog being or them commenting in the blog as that being the parameter for blog participation, for blog involvement. That was not the case. So um, they, they, what they saw it as was a reference to, it was their, their let's say, their compass for uh, their own language learning and language development, right? Uh, people are coming in, right? right? Um, yeah, take me just pausing and just answering Mariella's question, how do you organize these blogs? Um, yeah, well, I think Blogger, most of these platforms like Blogger and WordPress and so on, they are quite useful because they do help you organize your blogs and um, I keep track of what you're doing there. Um, but what what I did in, in terms of the regularity, right? Yes, it's um, it's me, Phil, Ruth. It's me, but uh, in terms of regularity of of the blogs, right? Uh, after each each class, oh, if you could go back there, Nelly, just go back to sl slide nine before I, I move to slide ten. Thank you. Um, what I what I did regularly was uh, it was sometimes done once a week, twice a week. Um, sometimes I would it would be done in the classroom itself, so that everything was actually. Uh, presented everything that we would type up or everything that was actually covered in the class I would simply just insert on the same day yeah so I didn't have to actually go after class and do anything right uh, sometimes the post was already there what I would do is actually open up a post and then edit it at the end of the class or the last five minutes of the class yeah uh, I would edit sometimes with the students, so um, it was um, something was like a, it was a, it was actually a on the spot activity. So the last five ten minutes, it, when we would we would sit down for feedback, I would go, okay, guys, so let's open up the blog here, and um, let's you know they would either dictate they would dictate to me what we had to put up on the blog, right, or I would ask them to in groups 
brainstorm what they wanted to see in the blog, put it in on you know arrange on slips of papers, and then I would come compile these slips of papers. Sometimes when um, some of them had their mobile devices, for example, with teens or with some others who were more techy, um, I would ask them, for example, to um, let's say type in what they wanted and then send send me either via um, Bluetooth or they would um, actually send it uh, via Google Doc or Gmail or whatever, right? Um, for example, this this one I'm showing on slide nine, it was used with a sketch. One of the students actually did this sketch image here, and then he shared it with me um, via uh, Bluetooth, right? So yeah, those were the techie students, but for some of them, those that are not techie, sometimes they would take a picture, for example, of uh, the board I was using, the IW, IWB, the interactive whiteboard, right? or they would take a picture of um, the slips of paper where they would write their ideas and then send it to me or um, you know, type it up with, with WhatsApp or SMS and send me via SMS. So the, the possibilities you know, were, were, again, enormous, right? And I would just ask them to do whatever they felt comfortable with or whatever they felt comfortable with. So this is how I would organize that and then simply save and, and, and post it. Right, and of course, all the students were previously they had previously subscribed to the blog, so that they would also get, you know, something new. Um, if I didn't post anything the day after, they let's say we had classes on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So if I didn't post on the Wednesday, they would, you know, send me a message. Oh, um, did we have class? Um, did you post anything? So they were kind of looking forward to it. It's like their daily dose. So they became again a bit addicted to the blog. So it's a, an addiction that's nice, I think, healthy addiction, and it also instilled a bit of learner training. You see, because they were they were expecting and they wanted to. They became part of their learning process, right? Okay. Um, if we could go to slide ten, then okay, Nelly. Just rounding up this here, healthy addiction. <laughs> yeah, I love that. All right, and talking about healthy addiction, uh, I think this 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 last blog here. It, it kind of um, consolidates that and, and let's say epitomizes this idea of the healthy addiction for them. There's, this was one I did with uh, an advanced group, uh, conversation group, right, level C1, and uh, student authoring was again done indirectly. Uh, they would recommend the topics, suggest topics for them, um, what needs to be recorded on the blog, um, difficulties they had since the um, the course in itself, there was, of course, there was a predefined course, but um, since I had taught this group for over three years, um, and three years with a conversation group is quite long. So you might imagine I might have run out, with, I might run out of topics, right? Um, or how to, let's say, approach topics with them, um, how to approach the subjects with them, so that um, I would always allow for them to come up with ideas um, or as I said, with the emergent language or what they produced in the class, this would be um, the input we would use for the next lesson. So difficulties they had, uh, sometimes simple stuff like things with pronunciation. Um, I would. This would be the let's say the raw materials for our next lesson, right? Um, acronyms, difficulties they have in terms of um, word choice, collocation. Um, even grammar issues that they still had difficulties with, right? Um, I this became um, involuntarily, right, or spontaneously became the topic for the next lesson, right? So uh, students, as I said, would recommend these topics sometimes. Um, it served as an excellent way for them to keep track of the discussion as well, and. Um, because since they would be, we have been with this group for three years, um, there's some students that students came and, and left. Some students came, uh, enrolled, and let's say um, for personal or professional reasons, uh, stopped attending, or would come sporadically. Um, so there was no, let's say, um, it was not a mandatory thing in terms of attendance. So students could come and go as they please. Right. But sometimes when students miss class, they would obviously um, go online 
and um, check and see what had been uh, posted in the on, in, on the blog and you know uh, again ask questions well okay uh, did you guys talk about this or where can I get more information about that uh, is there can you give me a, a, another link on this topic right and as some of them you said they felt they had missed class although they missed class of course the importance of them interacting with each other uh, face to face was important but um, when they were unable to come because of whatever reason right the blog helped to kind of bridge that gap this let's say physical gap of them not being there in the classroom so some of them for example some of them said i didn't i felt like if i didn't miss the class because um, I, I, I knew what you guys talked about, right? And um, some guys even commented, "Whoa, um, this must have been very interesting. It must have been very funny. I wish I could have seen this. Uh, I could have been here to see what you guys talked about or to see the video." Because sometimes we also include the video, and I would upload the videos that we saw in the classroom to the blog. Well, oh, sorry. There's a question here. Let me go back. Uh, were they adults? Yes. Yeah, all of them were adults, right? But in the case of Mariela, they were teens, some of them were teens, but um, some groups I worked with, for example, with Kid Blog, I worked with uh, younger teens, like 15, 16 year olds. Um, the blog I showed here on slide number eight was a was a teen group, so 17 to 19 year old, and the rest were adults, right? right. Yeah. Okay, sure, no problem, Nelly. Um, you, I'll, I'll move the slides. And um, they were able to work on adults from, I'm working, let's say, young adults to 30, 40s. So the ages would vary from 20s to 60 year olds, right? Yeah. Um, so this is the idea. So again, um, the possibilities, as we, we, we've been seeing here, are uh, immense. And before I go to the final slide, I would like to just pick up on any questions you guys have. Mariella, for example, is, is asking. Yeah. Okay, yes. Sure, no problem. I can move the slides here. So let's move to the last slide. Right. And and it says, right, learning transcending beyond the classroom. So I think my experience is what I'm trying to consolidate here is that transcending this, this classroom experience, it's not limited to the classroom right and we know that and that with uh, technology now right uh, in the classroom these so many tools that uh, enable us and enable students to expand their learning enable us to help them or facilitate their learning right um, and believe it or not we learn as well in the process right because we are not that's necessarily the um, let's say gatekeepers of knowledge per se right we are partake, partaking in the learning experience right not trying to be not to sound like a, uh, any cliche expression here to make any cliche expression but this is a, a re an honest truth right and i have learned a lot from them learned a lot from this experience with the blogs right so and as i put here in the last slide blog on if you're using blogs use it and uh, use them with the classroom and don't limit the the let's say participation or the evaluating their participation to simply commenting right um, but to other ways and to making it as a either an, a blogging tool authoring tool make it as a, a collaboration tool making it as a, a co-recording tool and so on so uh, i think that's it um, let's leave this open here for any questions right now or further questions or comments. Okay. Um, thank you very much for attending and, you know, for, for, I hope it was very, very useful for you. And uh, you have my Twitter account there, um, my Twitter ID, because I'm very much into Twitter right now. And you have the other links. So if you want to get in touch with me, um, I would be glad to, you know, engage in new project, collaborate with new projects. That's what I'm looking forward to. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Mariella. Thank you. Thanks all of you for participating. Okay, Nelly, over to you. All right, oh, Tom, over here. You can, let's do it for comments here. Okay, Tom, Nelly isn't there, so I'll leave it open for any questions or comments at this point. Yeah. Great, thank you, Dom. 
five minutes. If you don't have any questions or um, if you want to talk about your own experiences with blogging, I would love to hear what you guys do with blogging as well. I haven't been able to read, to read all the comments here. So if I missed anything you guys talked about in terms of blogging, right? I would love to hear what you do, you, you guys have done with blogging. Mm, I see how to develop this as well, Cab. Yeah, great. And yeah, you could use the blogs to do that, right? Uh, do you have any special blog? Uh, well, I wouldn't say special, but the one that's closest to my heart, of course, is the one that I started with, which is this one. I will insert the link here for you, right? It's what kind of started up everything. And um, this is what um, got me started with blogs, per se, Thank you. right? And I realized I could use it Thank you. Um, in the classroom, right? This is, let's say, my, my my first original baby, and that's what led to the others, you know, from there. So feel free to explore those blogs as well. Okay. <laughs> You're most welcome. All right. Yeah, hi, I'm back. Thank you, thank you so mm -hmm. much, uh, Stefan. Yeah, I had you guys to enjoyed leave this. for a second on slide number 10. <laughs> ah, okay. But right, uh, I'm back. They work in different areas. Um, I, I, I enjoy oh, yeah. listening to you. What you can because, do is. Um, um, it, it's, it's very Co authentic. You know, in this case, collaboration would be an interesting tool since they work uh, in different areas. Um, they could compile from, uh, or you have like a, a wiki a or something where each student could of, have his own page where they could compile their own vocabulary. Not a language I think. Teacher, you know, that's, I a good, think that's a good um, idea. You can learn from one another. Wiki or Google Doc or, <laughs> yes, there's you know, uh, Mariella. I think one of those so ideas would be fantastic Thank you so much. We can continue this. Not right now because the session will be starting. Uh, in about seven minutes, but mm -hmm. there's the link that Tom has added for everyone mm -hmm. to join uh, in the courseware. Uh, you'll have a chance <laughs> to um, course feed. Sorry, yeah. course feed is um, the discussion area. So feel free to um, answer uh -huh. and um, ask questions for those of you who have questions and share your thoughts okay. on the presentation. In addition, you're invited to reflect, as I said before, reflect and blog, and you have a chance to get a certificate for uh, learning and reflecting. <laughs> so uh, I think that's exciting. Mm -hmm. And of course, the presenters yeah, get a certificate for presenting, uh, Stefan. So thank you. Thank you so much. And we'll okay. see you uh, at the next session. You're all invited, including you, Stefan. So. Mm. Thank you for presenting. Okay.